because that's the entire context of the view because of generations and then it, this is what Teresa is saying about decades and decades and decades because I come from a long line of poor I will always be poor and we cannot expect that mindset to have a light bulb just because you say hindi pwede ko kayong maging mayaman at hindi pwede kayong hindi maging mahirap just like that it's not gonna happen um, the second mindset that is um, has to be combated is also the flip side which is an entitlement mindset and we grapple with this also all the time as Father Javi would say nga makipag-away ka sa mga mahirap it's fine kasi what, what's the entitlement, mi entitlement mindset? mahirap ako mayaman ka trabaho mong tulungan ako um, and that's not healthy as, uh, as well mahirap ako binoto, uh, binoto kita gobyerna ka ayusin mo tong problema ko and again, that is not also a very healthy mindset, that an entitled mind, mindset. And so that's why uh, when we work with our communities, um, it has to be a dialogue. Eh? And, and these are the mindsets that we have to navigate through. Um, or else, kahit ano pang ipasok mo at i-introduce mo, kung itong mindsets na to are prevalent, then it's hard to move forward. And so I guess what we found is dialogue. Rather than transferring mindsets of these kinds of mindsets to them, one is a dialogue. And I think siguro dito I'll transition and, um, and I would say that one necessary middleman, I guess, in this equation would be a social entrepreneur. Somebody who can speak that language, uh, be involved with the community, dialogue with the community, listen to the community, solve problems with the community, but at the same time understand also the other side of the equation that the community is not aware of, which could be big business, market environment, and all of that. Like this morning, uh, Ceres and Kame were in Rags to Riches in Tondo, uh, working with, with the artisans. But next, in two weeks, she's in New York for, uh, you know, working with. So, parang, it has to, these kind of things have to gel together. So, change won't happen overnight. Uh, we have to involve the community, but we have to understand the context of that. Uh, and, and I would suggest that. Uh, an individual who may be Athenians, that's actually a lot of people I'm seeing in the space, no? could be middleware or of middlemen uh, with communities and in the outside world. I'd, I'd like to just uh, distill that first, Father Ben, and then uh, I'll give the floor to Father Ben. Uh, I'd like to pick up from what they said, no? Um, through an illustration of an actual story of rags to riches. Nung simula ng Rags to Riches, yung board ang nagbibenta sa bazar. Uh, I remember very well sa Mount Carmel, yung mga rags ng Rags to Riches ay nasa loob ng Mercedes-Benz ng isang board member si Ange from uh, Green Meadows. Uh, isang almost uh, parang sports car na Mercedes-Benz. Punong-puno ng mga basahan na sinundo namin sa payatas ng Mercedes-Benz at nila sa Mount Carmel. Pagdating sa Mount Carmel, Piles and piles, ganitong table, piles and piles of frogs. Tapos nandun yung mga nanay. Tapos sabi ko sa mga nanay, oh, magbenta na kayo. Hoy, ayaw namin kasi mag english sila. Parang ganun. So, napilitan itong mga social na to na sina Ange ang mamigay ng flyers. At ang simple pa ng tagline ng Rags Riches noon, ang social na rags na may social conscience. So, kami namimigay ng flyers after the mass, yung mga nanay na sa likod ng rag. Maya-maya, nung pagatas ng misa, nung pumunta na yung mga beehive-looking donya no? ng, ng, ng Carmel, na kayang-kayang bumili, ganun pala yung behavior ng mga beehive-looking donya O ganito, pink, ganyan yan. O honey, bayaran mo. So si honey, mahalaga rin yun. So nagbilihan yung mga donya Ito yung magandang eksena ng Rags Riches, nang ding-hinding hindi ko makakalimutan. Kasi sa akin, yung image na yon hanggang ngayon, inspiration ko, on one end of the rug, hawak nung donya. Na ang ganda, ganda naman ng rug na to, tapos sa kabilang end nung rug, hawak nung nanay nung payatas, na hindi marunong mag-ingles. Tapos sabi nung nanay na behave looking donya, how, how did you do this? Tapos yung sa payatas, like this, like that, like that. Like this, like that. Puro like this, like that. But dahil dun sa isang basahan, suddenly nag-uusap yung mayaman at yung mahirap sa isang basahan na nung una kami lang namigay ng flyer, pero dahil dinumog yung booth ng Rags to Riches, suddenly yung nanay, naramdaman niyang, pinakikinggan ako, interesado siya sa produkto ko, 
after just one mass, kami na'y nakaupo at mga nanay na'y nagbebenta at nagsasalita. So the conclusion is that it is possible. It is possible to shift paradigms. It is possible to change mindsets. Pero ano yung formula as they were showing? Dialogue, dialectic talaga yung process. Meaning, pagpasok ng rags to riches sa payatas, we, we leave our footwear outside the door. Literally, metaphorically. Hindi kami papasok sa bahay na meron kaming daladala din na, na dogma na dinidikta sa kanila. Iiwan talaga namin sa patos namin sa labas. Literally, kahit si Raho, kahit si Amina, iniiwan ng sapatos sa labas, papasok, kasi makikipag-usap at dialectic. At yung dialogue na yon, doon na dadala palagay ko yung puhunan ng mga atinistang ito, kasama yung puhunan ng mga payatas na nanay, at yun sa dialogue na yun ay enrich. Uh, kaya mahalaga yung kinikwentong role models, kasi alam nyo, sa kahuli-hulihan, uh, sabi nga ni Mark, Hindi naman romantic ang kwento ng social entrepreneur. No? We should not romanticize it. May mga away. At sa isang away ng, sa community sa Payatas, nag-aaway na, nag ka na. Hindi ko makalimutan yung sabi ng isang nanay. Si Nanay Biring. Sabi ni Nanay Biring, iiyak na siya. Oh, umiyak pa talaga ako. No? <laughs> anyway, just to illustrate. <laughs> sabi ng nanay, alam niyo, sa kahuli-hulia naman, di naman pera habol natin dito, di ba? Ang hindi namin makakalimutan, brother, hindi namin makakalimutan na kinikilala kami ng mga tao. Yun ang mahalaga. At yung pagkilala nyo sa amin, ibig sabihin sila, na si Riz, kahit ganyan itsura niya, sosyal na sosyal, pupunta sa payatas at kinikilala yung mga nanay. Napantay. Nag-iiwan na sapatos sa labas. Yung pagkilala na yun, yung recognizing that dignity, yun ang naka-inspire sa kanila, yung naka-change ng mindset. At ngayon, may kooperatiba ang Rags to Riches na tumatakbo on its own. Di bali mag-away-away sila, yung nasasabi naman, sige mag-away-away kayo, mag-sabunatan kayo, because that's part of the process of empowerment. No? Hindi smooth sailing. Kung ano, yung, kung ano yung kuryente ng mga social entrepreneur, kuryente rin nila. Hindi dapat sila sinasaksak sa extension cord. Dapat nakasaksak sila sa main outlet like the social entrepreneur. That's empowerment. That is the role model. That they're, That's a witness that they're doing. No? Yung isang pagkilalang nag-iiwan ng sapatos sa labas, which is a dialogue na equal footing. Father Ben. Father Ben, kailangan yung mic kasi re-record daw. Pang CNN. Okay. I would like to respond to your question. Uh, um, uh, Mark said that we've been running sessions uh, the, since last year, about every two weeks, I meet with uh, Happy Noy, Rags to Riches, Got Heart, Chikawad uh, Kalinga. Uh, uh, the challenge we've been understanding is what is the path out of poverty? We've been trying to understand that. Uh, we'll be meeting like every two weeks. Uh, we listen to the story of GK, we listen to the story of Happy Noy, of Got Heart, of, uh, also education of Rags to Riches. Uh, we have learned that what uh, being poor is not a simple thing, and poverty is not a simple thing. There are many levels uh, in it. And so one of the things we've learned is that Gawad Kalinga works with the poorest of the poor. Uh, they started in Bagong Silang, and uh, they realized that the, at that level, the, most, the, 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 the deepest problem, of, the deepest hurt of loss of the poor is a total loss of sense of self, of confidence, of trust. Uh, you can see this because uh, that's why they had to build homes and so forth with them. You, you, I always tell people that the houses of Gawad Kalinga, it did not start with the house. They started with seminars about your worth as children of God, mga anak kayo ng Diyos, or God loves you. Ang sagot ng mga tao, hindi namin nararamdaman yung sinasabi ninyo. So long as we are ashamed to invite you to our house, we cannot be proud of ourselves. Uh, doon nagsimula ang pagtayo ng mga bahay uh, for them. Uh, and so, f fast forward, <laughs> we f then we find that, so this is the 10th anniversary of GK, and we're now doing an impact assessment study of every individual in the community and all the communities. Isa lang tanong, we did the FGD first. Ang tanong lamang is, anong nagbago sa buhay ninyo? And you can see that they're almost all related to a better sense of self and better relationships. Anong nagbago? Nagdadasal na kami, mas maayos na ang pakitungo sa bahay, hindi na kami nag-aaway, nabawasan na ang bisyo, uh, nagtutulungan na kami. Uh, at, uh, then one of the things that struck very much is they said, uh, iba na ang pagtingin ng mga tao sa amin. 
people look at us differently. If you go back to the early days, for example, uh, we had one session with the Nanais, and uh, they were saying that they were not, they, they, you know, they did not listen to the risk because they've been exploited so much. So many people have gone and made promises, and then, and then photo up lang, uh, maybe a, something in the newspaper, then they're gone. So they become very cynical about, about help. Ang sabi nila is that kasi they persisted, <laughs> kasi pumasok sa bahay namin, nakikain sa amin uh, nung hindi pa kami nagbumukhang tao. Nakikain sa amin. That was very powerful. Uh, the, for me, yun ang pagtingin nila sa salili, hindi sila, hindi sila nagbumukhang tao. Uh, okay. So, presence very important. Okay, so where are we? We have learned with Gawad Kalinga that we have moved forward on the level, of the, the level of poverty that has gotten them to a better sense of trust, that has gotten them to uh, feel that they're respected by other people, and so on. But they have not gotten to that level where they think of the future. They are, their remembrance of the past is so good that they are not thinking of the future. So we're now pressing, paano yung pag-aaral ng mga anak ninyo? They're not thinking of that. They're not thinking about the education of their children. Uh, they're not thinking yet of enough jobs so they could get, get beyond that. In fact, I think our analysis basically is that social entrep, uh, success for happy noy or for rags to riches, really comes at a higher level than GK. They should have reached already a certain level of uh, trust, of relationship, in fact, nagtatanong kami sa Happy Noy, what hinders them, hinders them is usually broken relationships in the family. But so we're struggling with that now. The next question we're asking is, what is it that will get them to think of the future? What is it that will get them to plan for education of their children? Uh, we're the 10th anniversary of GK, that's our, that's our question. So may answer to your question, maybe, answer is that the way out of poverty is, is is many steps. And when you ask about the mentality of the poor, it depends which poor you're talking about. Uh, the, the, the challenges move as you go along, and that's what we're trying, trying to track. I, I like one more point. We've also learned that one of the biggest problems we face, because we are discussing this, why, why, can, why can we not get out of this 30% poor? All our, other, all our other neighbors have solved uh, Millennium Development Goal 1. Vietnam has solved it, uh, Indonesia has solved it, Malaysia has solved it, Thailand has solved it. We are the only major country that has not solved MDG1, extreme poverty and hunger, cutting it in half. Kakaya, no? I've been asking myself why. The other reason is that we, one of, we learned from Gawad Kalinga that I, I worked with GK since 2003 with every typhoon, typhoon Yoyong, typhoon Reming, typhoon Milenio, Sandong, Pablo. We go there and we we have a list from the SWD, by the time you get there one month later, half are gone, wala na sila. What have they done? They've gone to the urban poor. They've gone to some relative in San Fernando, Pampanga, to Manila. And so uh, one, reason, one reason why the problem of poverty is intransigent, we realize, we're asking ourselves, is that no matter how many people GK or rags to riches or happy noy helps, there are more falling in. They're simply more falling in. With every typhoon, uh, with every fire, with every major sickness, people fall from class D to class E. So it's a very deep and complex problem. <laughs> and, and so sometime in February, we hope to run a workshop to tell you what we've learned. Uh, so we'll talk about BAM. So but, but from, our, from the point of view of the group, BAM Aquino's job is now to get there into government and to get feel health to work because there's a lot of uh, because it's not getting down to the ground we i when the president uh, no said last year that there were 85 percent coverage i immediately called up our mayors and unfortunately it's not true no uh so we have to get that and then uh we have to we have to help farmers who lose their crops after a big like a typhoon pedring, and who have to borrow five, six to replant, and eventually end, end losing their land. Anyway, we have to find a way 
to create safety nets because no matter what the four Ps do, no matter what the conditional cash flow transfer do, uh, there are unfortunately more people falling in than we're able to get up. So I just want to tell you, we are trying to understand it and we're trying to find solutions, but poverty is a very multi-pronged problem <laughs> and uh, it is not just the mentality of the poor. <laughs> It really is that we are not fixing the systems that f make people fall into poverty, nor does Korea. So anyway, maybe sometime early next uh, second semester, <laughs> we hope to present to you the studies we've been making, and we hope that, what's the purpose? We hope that people who want to help the poor will understand where to come in and what it takes. But as Father Javi said, and all of them say, it will not work if all you do is just go there and give money. <laughs> you have to invest in relationships. That's the, that's the main thing we've learned. You must give time, you must invest in relationships, because unless you build relationships and trust, uh, the mentalities won't change and it won't work. Uh, we're down to last five minutes, so maybe one last question. If the uh, yes, uh, okay, one last question, and then we'll wrap up. I'm just curious, uh, not so spiritual, or uh, it's a little more secular because you're still an enterprise, right? So how does the profit profit motive differ from a uh, uh, normal enterprise for a social enterprise? It's a good question. The, um, it is an enterprise. In fact, um, so go very quickly, na lang, no? but when we were starting, what's funny is, because we registered Happiness as a for-profit, and then in a session like this, my co-founder, si Bamga, parang, the reactions he, were get, he was getting were, tutulong kayo, pero bakit, bakit, um, and, and so I guess the first, the first answer to that is, yes, we're a for-profit. But siguro let me clarify and qualify what we mean when we say that. For us, profit is not the motive to be, I mean, just to be very, um, it's important. Uh, we want to reward the people who have come in and helped and invested, but, but it's not the motive. In fact, sa totoo lang, it's only this year that we are actually about to cross that, that line eh, after several years just being very open about it. Um, and so what do we mean when, we, what's the intention? The intention actually is to help, but to do it within the context of a business model. Um, and those two things uh, have been parang the, the challenge of social entrepreneurs ever since naman talaga. And so um, for us, we do not have a profit maximizing formula in our heads. We have a profit optimizing formula. What does that mean? Um, Bakalis uh, will talk about it later. Um, but like, we work with stores. And it's easy to, to profit maximizing would be highest margin to us, lowest margin to store. Profit maximizing would be, let's pay the nanays who make the bags sa dulo na, after nabenta na. Um, kasi hindi pa natin nabibenta eh. So, we come from a profit optimizing background rather than a profit maximizing. For us, profit is important. We're not afraid to embrace it, but it is a means to an end, and that end really is to solve a social problem. Uh, and, and it doesn't mean also that we want to... Ito nga is, sometimes we also need to take care of the people who work in the social enterprise also. Um, for us, it makes no sense if somebody working in Happy New Year R2R cannot even afford to send their children to Ateneo. And so that's part of our goals and our dreams, uh, in as much as we want to help the communities. Yeah, good question. Quick na lang. Because um, <clears throat> as a social enterprise, we're trying to solve big problems. And because we're trying to solve big problems, and that's our foundation, that's our values. Actually, sinabi ni the rest, so pupunta na ako dun sa kabilang side. Um, we believe that a mission this big really deserves the best people. Honestly. Like, I dream every day 
of Athenians going out of Ateneo and thinking of rags to riches, of happiness as an option, and not just as, sige kakawang gawa muna ako, and then I will work somewhere, and then I'll work there. Because what if we can get the best talents in this sector? What kind of power would that be? Because the best talents are going to the sector where there's career um, advancement, there's competent salaries, and that's fine. But what if we can compete? And we can bring them to this sector as well. Because they're raking in so much money for a lot of big companies. What if they can create so much impact here? So that's our vision. We want social enterprise and enterprises who think of others, like Kirks, to, to really be an option, a real option for people. And they say, okay, I will go here because I don't have to sacrifice too much. I can eat, paren. <laughs> I can live a good life, but at the same time, I can do something I love. So if, if that's the case, I think more people will go to this sector, and we need people in this sector. We don't have a lot, and we really want to. It doesn't make sense to me that people say, okay lang na kumita ka kung hindi ka tumutulong, pero hindi okay na kumita ka kung tumutulong ka. That's kind of weird. So for me, we have to sort of change that mindset. I know it's hard, it's going to be a process, but compared to where we were six years ago, I think now it's more accepted. Na parang, oo nga, kailangan. Kasi kailangan hindi lang kayo pang this year, hindi lang kayo pang six months. Kailangan you be there as long as it takes to solve the problem, and it's not going to be overnight. Sorry, angsty. Okay. <laughs> Ako naman, I'll be very blunt and honest to say that ours really, model-wise, is not a social enterprise. It's not a social enterprise in a sense that we don't have a community. Ours, the model that we have is a typical business model. But I think what I'm proudest of in our business is the way we do business, especially the way we treat the people working for us. And I guess that could be a model for most, if not majority, of what's out there now. Social enterprise is our dream. But honestly, mo many people will still have, will st are still very risk averse or unsure of going toward that direction. And perhaps a middle ground would be still doing the normal business, but then again, do it in a way na humane naman na in empower mo naman yung mga tao. So, for instance, in concrete terms, how do we do that with our employees? We require them to have monthly savings. We, we want to have them to have, we want them to have ins insurance. We invest on them. In a way, nakikikain kami, nakikikain kami sa during lunch. So, kumbaga, if you want to be biblical and gospel about it, parang Jesus came and dwelt among them. Eh. So, in the same way as when you deal with your employees, try nating i-sirain yung power gap. Na parang equal naman sila eh. So, my, my mom used, has a very good analogy. Sabi niya, oh, pag fiesta sa atin, I'm from Iloilo, so fiesta, fiesta. Oh, pag fiesta sa atin, bukas yung bahay, kahit hindi mo ka mag-anak, pinapapasok mo. Tapos sa mga taong tumutulong sa'yo, nakakatulog ka pag gabi, magdadamot ka. So, that very basic anecdote or analogy really struck me because, yun nga, oh nga, ano ka nga, mag ko nga sa friends of friends mo, nagpapa-impress ka. Sa mga taong directly tumutulong sa'yo, hindi mo magawa-gawa. So yun, so uh, we strive to make our business like that. The, the opportunities that have been given to us right now enables us to do this business later on if we have options and opportunities to do more, especially in the social enterprise side, then we'd gladly do it. So maybe just to bring everything together, I, I'd like to synthesize everything to another concrete answer to the question of Sir Domingo. And this is also the proposal we're making to Secretary Purisima when he asked me about the formula. We would like to propose three. One, formation. A formation that is based on heroic leadership because heroic leadership starts with the self, as Father Ben was emphasizing. A self that has to be but recognized and uh, really fortified. Second, to tweak the existing models. Land Bank, for example, already has the Gawad PTAC. So we wish to tweak that to highlight more business models like Rags Riches, Happy Noy, and Get Blued. No? But uh, these companies, this K-Cube, are already existing examples, but there are so many cooperatives all over the country that this just needs some tweaking to actually scale up. And then the third, which Mark already emphasized, we need a bridge. Uh, one thing I recognize working with the farmers, because of all the social enterprises I'm engaged in, lahat lumipad na, 
except that which we're working on with the farmers. Complex ang farming because of the issues of land, culture, etc., etc. And so I'm recognizing kailangan ng isang social entrepreneur sana na pwede mag-bridge, mag-train, maging bumabad sa community. And so we need to actually search for them and we hope to launch within the year through Land Bank, through Secretary Purisima, the search for fine fellows. No? Ano yung fine fellows? Formation for innovation, nation building, and earth advocacy. People who are creative like these people, innovative. People are nation builders and people who are concerned about the environment. And there will be formation for three years for this because my observation is that there's so many business plan competitions, but it's all about the business plan. Who will make that work? A social entrepreneur. But there's no search for a social entrepreneur. And if there is, it's actually abroad. Or if, it's, if there's one, there's no formation that's long-term. So that's what we hope to accomplish, huh? three-prong. A formation, a business modeling, showcasing, and the search for the social entrepreneurs themselves so that we can have more Mark, more Reese, and more Kirk. A round of applause for them. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for attending. We invite you to the Mass at the Jisu. Thank you. Thank you.